Can you close the door? Thank you. So good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Wolfgang Disch. We will have a talk about uh, Joomla Go's iPhone. And uh, I will bring you the different aspects when you are uh, in, the, let's say, the mobile world. This is what we're talking about. I will give you an overview of what is possible, what exists already. And then uh, I will give you a little demo of a component and component and template which I designed uh, for iPhone and uh, then uh, additional info about this. Okay, let's start here. The mobile internet. Um, well, we have 2010 and now it's reality. Um, I started with mobile internet in uh, 2000. Um, I worked for a German um, uh, telephone service provider and uh, wholesaler uh, who uh, bought, um, had a, a, a huge uh, inter, um, a huge e-commerce site and sold handsets, mobile phones, and so on. And for this uh, e-commerce. Um, we wanted people, we, we wanted to use also uh, access from mobile phones. And we tried uh, with uh, the first phones who have been able to connect to the internet by browser. These uh, have been uh, devices by Nokia. Maybe you know the brick, yeah? He had an internet browser inside. It was, I think, Opera some sort of opera, and um, it's on a, it was on a, uh, the Symbian uh, operating systems. And there already exist uh, some, uh, let's say, also applications which you could use uh, to connect to the internet and uh, uh, get data from there and make things. But it was very, let's say, you had to be patient, very patient, to use this because the connection was very slow. Uh, Germany did not have UMTS up to there. Uh, UMTS in Germany began in 2004, I, I think. And uh, it was very expensive. So I had a phone which was uh, paid by the company and I had no problem with that, but every user who wanted to access his email by his mobile phone had really uh, very expensive rates for that. And this, this have been reasons that nobody used this mobile internet. But the um, telecom uh, providers, they um, had the problem that they did not make any more profit out of the telephone uh, 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 users. So they had to think about how can we boost this. And so they decided here in Germany, and I think all in Europe, um, to change to UMTS and to make uh, it possible that the mobile internet will come. Means that um, handsets, mobile phones, are not only used to phone, but also to use to, to access data. So, and now we have it. And this combination of fast connections, which we have now, low costs, well, I have a flat rate here for my phone, yeah? And this, if you use it uh, for business, then you will have lower costs than before. You have big screens, and you see also uh, in this device uh, you have a, a new uh, user experience. So you do not have uh, um, a keyboard anymore. You have virtual keyboards, touch screen, and also you control it by, let's say, think, doing things like this, gestures. You spread your fingers and it zooms. These are things which are new to the user and um, 
when you, when you look at the uh, sales uh, from Apple, then you see that uh, people want to do this. Yeah. Well, I will focus today on the iPhone um, because it is the, uh, well, it's the, the most uh, impressive uh, uh, device which we have uh, on the market. Um, and when you look at the iPhone, and uh, then you have um, two ways to um, access data. One is the browser. So iPhone has an, an built-in uh, um, Safari browser. It is a web kit, uh, but it is uh, the same uh, web kit which is used in Safari as the rendering engine. And the other way is to use apps. You, you have uh, apps from Apple from the beginning to, to access your email, uh, to store contacts and uh, Google Maps and, and everything else. These uh, apps are, uh, well, native apps means they are written in uh, um, uh, program language uh, Objective-C. You have to uh, compile it afterwards. Then um, you uh, have to put it into the App Store, upload it to your phone, and then you can use it. But um, there is another way, which is provided by Apple, which, is, uh, which they call web apps. Um, first, I will show you a difference. So I have an app, which uh, I have in two uh, forms here. And this is uh, the, the Deutsche Post, the German uh, Post, uh, which has an app. And I do not know if, if you all can see this. It looks like a native app, and it is a native app. And uh, it enables you to uh, look for, uh, to buy stamps, to look for post offices, and things like that. And uh, it gives you information about prices and so on. But on the same time, I have another icon here, which looks similar, and which is in web app, also provided by the same company with the same information. And you see the difference from the beginning on. It's, it loads slowly, very slowly, but then, yeah, bad connection here. Yeah, and you can see it. It looks very similar. It has here, the difference is there is uh, an advertisement included, but then you have the same things which you can do, and when you press on it, it behaves like the other app, like the native app. Okay. Yesterday I got an SMS from, uh, from T-Mobile, which is my uh, uh, provider here, who told me that um, my monthly uh, volume is gone away and they will uh, uh, drop the, the connection speed for me now. And um, tomorrow is the first of the next month and it will be fast again. But today is the, the baddest uh, connection I can have. <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay, and you see, it looks like an app. But it is not a native one. It's, it is what uh, Apple calls a web app. Okay. Um, 
when uh, there are um, 10 to 20,000 apps in the App Store up to now, this, this number changes uh, rapidly. And um, uh, maybe you have seen a lot of them. If you use the iPhone, you will have uh, some on your uh, phone. And um, as an example, I, I will give you one, which is uh, good for Joomla administrators. It's uh, called Gem. Oops, where is it now? Yes, here. This is the symbol of gem. Okay. And it is, uh, it is an uh, application <coughs> which provides you with an administration tool. It is an administration tool uh, for Joomla. Uh, I think you know uh, Joomla has an uh, 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 XML RPC uh, um, interface which is used by some applications and this application uses this uh, uh, interface. You have to install a plugin for Joomla which does the work inside Joomla and then you can download this application and you can, um, you can administer uh, your server. So here, this is the name of my server and I have here articles, users, uh, sections, categories, menus, menu name, settings and uh, here about gem. Um, you will find information of uh, these uh, people who are uh, who built this application. Well, this is uh, up to now. I, I don't uh, have any other information. The only uh, administration interface for um, Joomla. I like it very much. It is uh, there is a light and a full version. The light one enables you to administer one server and is for free. And the full version. Uh, will cost you. Yeah? Uh, one question. Uh, can you use it to access uh, components? No. 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 Just the core components? Just the core components. And um, yeah, no, uh, if, if you're using also K2, for example, or SU, it's not able to, uh, to for, for you. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know uh, th these people from covered apps. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's. It, I will give you the information and and maybe you can contact them and then come together. Okay. This is the administration side of Joomla and these are uh, native apps. Well, there are uh, pros and cons uh, uh, for native apps. Um, well, the best pro is the first one. You can sell the application. This is what uh, a lot of people are doing. Uh, you have prices from uh, 79 cents, euro cents, up to 99 euros or what else there, there is no there's no limit I think the limit is 999 euros um, you have the app uh, the Apple uh, App Store as, as the marketplace where you can sell this application this application does something like it is a game it gives your information or it's just fun and there are a lot of people who are willing uh, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to use it 
if they if it's fancy and it if makes fun and and it if or it if if it helps really. So uh, I'm I'm traveling a lot and I have a lot of uh, application which helps helps me for traveling. For example, for for the metro in uh, the big cities in in Germany and outside, and uh, also. Uh, um, uh, I can book uh, trains and flights uh, by the phone and when I, well, uh, and much more. Okay. Uh, the App Store um, helps you marketing this application. This is, this is a big thing and uh, even if uh, Apple makes a lot of money and you have to share your profit. It, uh, if people really want your application, you will make money with it. So, as you have seen, apps are fast, very fast. Fast means as fast as the hardware can, can, can do it. And uh, you can use graphics. This is important for games, for example. Your application can run uh, offline, so uh, you do not need uh, internet connection while your app is running if your app does not connect and exchange data over the internet. For example, games, most of them run independent from internet connection. You have, uh, you're able to store data on the phone with your app you can design it to store da uh, data. Uh, you have really, you can make a fancy uh, user interface which gives the user a, a really good user experience. And you can use hardware features. For example, I have an app which, um, where you use the camera to, uh, um, uh, to take a photo of barcode from uh, product codes from, from stores and uh, the application takes this uh, barcode, um, encodes it, uh, decodes it, goes to the internet and looks up the best seller for this product. So this is possible only with a native app because you have to access the hardware uh, camera. And there are a lot of, let's say, geolocation applications out there. But this is now, it's not uh, pro the app because also we will see the web, the web app also provides this now. Okay, what is the contra? Yeah, Apple controls everything. So this means that uh, Apple decides which application uh, goes into the App Store and which not. Um, so, uh, for example, in, in Germany, um, uh, T-Mobile exclusively uh, uh, sells the um, iPhone. And so um, this relationship between Apple and T-Mobile uh, um, let's say, um, so Apple did not allow applications which are against the interest of T-Mobile. For example, Skype or something which does not use the tel telephone provider. And also SMS application uh, are not provided here in Germany, which do not send SMS, but text messages and then Re, uh, uh, route it uh, on an SM, to an SMS provider which actually delivers the SMS. And Apple also controls the development process. This means if you want to uh, have no new features in your application and you um, uh, want to update it, it needs uh, that it goes through a technical uh, process where uh, um, Apple uh, controls or checks your 
checks your application if it's uh, well, well designed and if it does not, uh, let's say, um, make the, o, uh, the OS uh, drop down. Okay, developers have to pay an annual fee. Up to now, it's, let's say, uh, I, I think it's 80 euros, uh, but um, maybe in, in the next years, this will change. And if you sell the app, you have to share the profit with, uh, with Apple. Well, um, maybe you can live with that, but you have uh, a new learning curve uh, you need uh, more, uh, you need uh, to learn ob another language. If you do not know it up to now, it's Objective C. This is the only language which uh, Apple allows. And uh, development is only on Macs. And yeah. And another uh, disadvantage is. Um, if you, have in, if you have an application, if you have an idea, if you have a service which we want, you want to provide to the user, um, you do not want it only to have on an iPhone. There are other platforms, Symbian from Nokia, uh, uh, I think Motorola also uses it, and uh, Android, which is uh, the, the, um, the mobile, mobile platform from Google. And um, then you have to develop uh, applications for all platforms. And uh, you're, well, maybe you know that from, uh, so I know that from, from uh, developing for Microsoft Windows, um, if you're ready with your development process, you want to sell it or give it away to the user, then it starts that Windows is changed, you have an update, you have to come back to the application, start again, then a new operating version will come out. You have huge changes between, let's say, the old one was Windows uh, 98, for example, and Windows XP. There are huge, there's a huge gap and you have to, to, to redesign it and you have to uh, start from scratch again and start the development again. So you are very heavy and uh, busy with, your, with development uh, for different uh, sites. And um, this is what the nature of uh, native apps is. Okay, well. And the native apps, if you want to sell an application, it's the only way. You have no choice. But if you provide a service, for example, on your website, then it is, um, there is an alternative way. And these are these web apps. OK, what, what are web apps? I showed you one, and I will give you another one here. Where we come back to this again and again. Now, you see this is the home screen of your phone and you have icons. These icons usually are uh, uh, native apps, but here you have an icon when you click on it, you have a start sc screen, and after that, yeah, I will show you later. <laughs> <laughs> after that, you will have the app. So actually, you do not really hear. This is how it looks like. Very simple. And this application is a web app, but uh, it is, only a link on, um, on the home screen to a website. So um, you can, when you are in the browser, you can save a, a, a 
links uh, favorites to your desktop here uh, for any for any link for any website and these web applications only is one icon here it is a link to a website this is one thing one thing is technical spoken but um, the most important thing on web apps is um, they behave like a native app. They give you the experience of a native app. This is what really a web app is and what, what makes it different from um, the link to a website. For example here, you, you, maybe you know this from uh, your contacts app or other uh, you have here uh, a list and if you click on one item then another uh, image will slide in and when you press here you will be back here without any delay. So it's not actually getting the page from the internet right now? It does that when you start it up or how does it work? Does it maintain the connection? No, uh, well, it needs the connection and we come to it back later. But uh, what it does, it, it preloads these items. So actually, you, you can see it in, in, the, in the code later. And I can show you in, in, a, in another browser, you will see in Internet Explorer what really is loaded. Yes. Okay, this is what I got from yesterday. <laughs> I did not know this shortcut before, uh, but I think this is a very important thing, user experience thinking. Means uh, before you design a website or before you design an application for mobile phones, you should have in mind what the user expects. This is the most important thing of all. And uh, when you look on, on phones, um, then you don't have so much uh, uh, room here on your display. And so you have to concentrate on the main things which you want to show to the user. So first of all, what does he want? He wants uh, fun. This is a, a real, let's say, selling factor of this device. People use it just for fun, not only for, for as a phone. They have games on it. So uh, if I have two sons and uh, if uh, uh, I'm together with them, I, I do not own my phone anymore. So uh, they want to have it all the time to play with it. Yeah, and also I like the fun and I can present you some special applications which are native applications. That one. You know that from concerts, yeah? When you, when you are on a, a rock concert, for example, sometimes all people have a lighter. Now you don't know, you don't have to use your lighter, you have your lighter with you, you can use that. And my favorite one is the parking disc. This is, I don't know if, if uh, you have in, in other countries, if you have the same parking discs in Germany, there are parking zones where you use this parking disc, yeah, you can have here the time. Yeah, when you, uh, when you arrive and they, uh, the police will look at, ah, how long is it here and is it allowed or not? And this, this parking, this is very nice. You can flip to the back and again. And you have the choice when you use it. Either, well, you have a parking disc you have to put in the car on, on the front screen and you have the choice. Uh, leave it as it is 
and then the screen will uh, uh, darken uh, within uh, five minutes because you have a screen saver here and, and um, the, the, the screen switches off the display in, five, in one or five minutes, then uh, the police will see nothing. <coughs> or the other choice is uh, to disable the screen, server, the screen saver and uh, then your uh, uh, battery will be low within, uh, <laughs> within let's say, uh, half an hour and uh, the police also sees nothing. And if you come back to your car, maybe you have two devices there or... <laughs> <our t> <laughs> no, no it's, it's just a joke and, and I, I like it. I like it. It's fun. Yeah, nobody uses it. No, <laughs> nobody. No. <laughs> okay. Well, what makes um, what makes this phone so special in case of less user uh, uh, experience? So the information you have here comes to the user in a, in a clearly arranged and in a very short way. You don't have any Chrome in, this, in these applications. You, uh, when you look at a website, there, there is, let's say, the main content, but also there is advertisement, for example, or there is a, a lot of styling. What, whatever web designers have in their mind, you can find on websites, it's a rich media. You will have video there and, and everything. For example, yesterday, um, Fotis showed us this uh, Greek cassette, uh, Gazetta, uh, which, which is a magazine in, in Greece. And uh, really, this website is full of everything. And people like it if they use their PCs and, and if they have big screens. And it looks uh, uh, very interesting and, and the speed is, is high in our times. You have a, a, a good connection if you are at home or if you're using WLAN. Yeah, not here, but most in, in other places, yeah. But uh, if you use this phone, then information is, the, the, you only uh, want the, the poor information because people don't have time if they use it. They just take it off their pocket, look at it, and want to see what's going on. Where is my bus? When does the train leave? Where is the street? This is, this is the focus where people uh, focus on if they, they like these apps. And so if you design apps or web apps, you also have to uh, focus on, on that. Only the important information. And people want similar look and feel for all their apps. Uh, I found it uh, in, a, in a blog. Uh, there was um, a study about user experience on the iPhone. And uh, they, um, there were def different uh, applications uh, and, and comments on these applications and the, these comments said this is a good application uh, because blah blah and this is a bad one because uh, it behaves very different from what we know from the Apple apps. So this is really, in this study it's shown that this is important for the user that all these apps behave in a similar way. Okay, let's come to the pros and contra web applications. The first one is very heavy. Uh, very, yeah, I have a lot of experience with trains here in Germany. And if you try to use a web app inside a train, uh, then you, you will get crazy, yeah? So, uh, these web apps always need an uh, environment where you have stable uh, internet connections. This is the downside of a web applications. 
There are features in, um, in the uh, web kit, in the Apple um, browser, um, which allows you to cache things and uh, also to um, store data locally. These are features which comes from HTML5 and allow you off, off, uh, uh, allow you storage, uh, uh, offline storage. Uh, but they are not used up to now, as far as I know. Um, well, the, na the native apps are definitely slower, uh, the, the web apps are definitely slower than native apps. But maybe this is not so important if you have only small information and if you don't have a lot to navigate inside your application. You cannot use all the hardware features, for example, the camera, but um, since version 3.1 uh, of the operating system, uh, the WebKit also uh, provides you to use um, the geolocation uh, uh, inside the device. And, um, well, the marketing of your application is difficult. Means you cannot sell it. No way, sell a web application. It's, it's a website. But um, you, um, sorry, yeah? I think you can sell it, uh, but you, uh, uh, you should be able to identify the iPhone which is using the web app. Is that possible? Not, not up, up to now, no. The iPhone has different uh, things which identifies them. This is an identifier inside the App Store, which uses the App Store. And uh, this is a device identifier. And also, uh, if it's a phone, it has a, a number which is called the EMI number, which should be... A, a, um, a unique number of every phone in the world. Uh, but you cannot access both numbers within the browser. Cookies, the only way. Yes? But uh, in WebKit, in HTML5, you can set the screen, different screen sizes. Yes. For different devices. The, the, the code HTML5 can read which screen size the device has. Yes. So you want to identify the device by the screen size? The screen size, yeah. You can identify, and we come to this later, you can identify if the browser who accessed your website is uh, uh, an iPhone browser or not. And you, uh, you know from iPhone, uh, the, you know the, the sizes, and also you know the orientation. The, um, the web kit can give you the orientation of the device, if it's landscape or portrait. But you cannot identify, means uh, identify, I understood uh, uh, as uh, um, this is my iPhone and not your iPhone. But you can identify if it is an iPhone or not. Sorry? You could sell it as a service. As yes. A, like, yeah. This is what, what I want to say. You cannot sell the application, but what you can sell is uh, the service. And, and so here is the point. How do you sell a service? You sell your service from your website. You usually have your website, and there you sell the service. And this service may also be uh, on, on the iPhone, but usually you also have it on your website. Wouldn't it be possible to make a, a, a proper iPhone app through which you actually essentially sell the web app service? This is possible. Apple allows uh, now to, uh, um, that you have uh, applications which are only a wrapper around the website. So usually this is done by people uh, who need 
geolocation data. Well, now, you, you, uh, now it's also possible here in the WebKit to access it, but before, means last year, for example, people designed applications, uh, native applications, which start up uh, fast, uh, take the, the data geolocation, for example, or camera, sends it to a web page, and back comes the web page, and you only see, uh, let's say, uh, um, it's only the frame. The application is only the frame, and inside you you have the browser, and you see the website. This is possible, but it makes to to have this. It makes uh, uh, also work. You need to uh, design that. Um, maybe you can download it from the internet. Maybe there is a source code. I don't know. I, I think so. Uh, but you also have to, well, you have to uh, know a little bit about Objective-C if you do it. And you have to go through this development process. Yeah, means uh, that you can have a service which, which you can provide. And how do the people uh, find this service? Well, they go to your website. And then if they come to your website, something should happen. And this is what, what is next here. Uh, before, uh, I, I will look at the pro. Well, it's easy to implement. It should be, and hopefully it is. Um, I think it's, if, if you know uh, a lot of uh, web design and, and, and web applications, then it's easy for you. You don't have to learn Objective-C, for example. You don't need updates. Well, App Store makes it easy to, to deploy updates, uh, but, oops, we are very late. Um, okay. But uh, you still need updates. And maybe you can use your web applications for other platforms. Uh, but the most thing here is you're using uh, open standards. And this means that you are not uh, uh, no more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, bound to Apple. OK, how do you build web applications? 15? Yeah, 15 minutes is enough. We will we'll go through it faster. It's enough. Okay, so if you're building web apps, you don't want to build it from scratch. And there are frameworks out there which helps you. One of them is IUI, which is uh, uh, essentially JavaScript package uh, combined with CSS and image. And one which is new and very new to me also, JQ Touch, which does uh, similar things, but not with uh, J, uh, not with simple uh, JavaScript, with raw JavaScript. It uses jQuery uh, as uh, as the library. And this IUI is uh, programmed by Joe Havit. Does anybody know this name? You should know this if you're uh, debugging web applications. He wrote Firebug the, um, for a Firefox browser. OK, you will find his blog here uh, with an article which introduces the concept. And here you will find uh, the code. There are other people now to, uh, let's say, to drive this, this, uh, this project further on. And this is the website of, of this. I know this since I heard of it uh, three days before. So I cannot tell you anything about this. But if I come home, uh, I will do, this is the first thing I will do. I will look at it. Uh, it looks very promising. Uh, but what I use here is IUI. I will show you uh, today this uh, component and uh, this is IUI, which I use. Yeah, this is the front end. And where comes the back end? 
uh, now comes the back end, where does this content come from? Yeah. And this is uh, what we are doing here, uh, Joomla. And so the content is, in our, uh, is already in our website. Yeah. What we are, want to do is to connect IUI with uh, Joomla. This is, uh, this is the, the kernel of what I have done. And look here, we just, we don't want uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to have, uh, to, to, um, to rewrite the content if we use another uh, uh, front end. So we have the content already for our website. The only thing we need is we need another different format which delivers it to the, uh, to the front end and the information looks dif different, but uh, it's the same information. Okay, I called uh, this project iPhone 1. Actually, this is, there are three parts of the project. Uh, one uh, is the front end. The front end is handled uh, by a template. This template you can uh, install as a, a Joomla template and it's very, yeah, uh, there is not so much insight. The, uh, the essential things are IUI is, in, in, is inside the template. So this template does not have any positions uh, for modules, it only for the content. And the content then comes into this template using a component. Um, I decided to use a component because you want to select content. Uh, you don't want to deliver, let's say, uh, only all uh, articles of a category. You want to select, okay, I want the first and the second one and things like that. And this is what the, con the component is for. And um, IUI uses Ajax, and so you, use, you, use, uh, you need an Ajax handler, and this also is inside the component. And uh, last but not least, uh, there is, um, you need a browser switch. Browser switch means um, if the people comes to your website, then uh, you can, well, you can have a, a link to your, to your uh, application, but um, also um, a good way is if he comes with an iPhone, he will see your website differently. And this means uh, the browser switch. Uh, um, will get this information from, from HTTP request which uh, a browser it is and then switch to a different start page, a, a different menu item. Is there a particular reason why you chose to do it in ACX as instead of, for example, uh, using a plugin which checks the browser in the ACX? I decided uh, not to, to touch the, the, the index HTML. This would be one way and HT accesses is very fast and yeah maybe maybe someday I will write a plugin and uh, well I want to invite people here to work on this with me if you want to help me for this plugin you're welcome uh, because this makes it uh, really more uh, let's say uh, configurable what, what do you need Here, yes. I, I changed the item ID. Okay. Yes, <coughs> the item ID uh, uh, to the to the menu item, which I choose as the start start uh, starter, as the start page. So it's it's hard coded. It's hard coded. In the AG yes, I don't have. Sorry for that. I don't have the code here. I tried to download it uh, today this morning 
but I don't have access to my server. Uh, so only HTTP, but not uh, cannot go down to the htaccess file. And I don't have uh, this uh, code in mind. But um, I'll, all this information I will uh, very, very soon, hopefully, I will uh, uh, publish it on my website. Okay, what can IUI do? It can show menu items. This is what I told you I sh you have here. This, this uh, is a menu with the different menu items and it can preload items. And it not only can, uh, you can have links inside and then uh, if it's a, uh, let's say a regular link, then uh, it will reload the page uh, as usual. But it's possible also to use Ajax to uh, reload uh, items. So here, this is uh, the menu items. These are the preloaded items. It also can uh, display dialogues. It's uh, not so, uh, not very pretty, but it's a dialogue. Can you see that? So you cannot go any further. You only can submit or cancel this dialogue. And it provides you with the Apple look and feel. Okay, the component uh, gives you the possibility to select what you want to display, single articles, uh, all articles of a category, list of articles, and it can be extended to uh, all articles of section and so on. And it handles the HX requests. So this is uh, where this information for you should be. I will uh, deliver it on my website. So how do you use this component? You install the template and the, com uh, uh, the, template and the component in, in a way which you usually do. And then you create a menu item. And uh, this is the item for the content. And after that, you assign this template iPhone 1 to this menu item. I will do it now in a demo. Um, and maybe it's a good idea to make this menu item uh, invisible for regular users which use this PC. You can do this by CSS or something else. And um, also, the next step is redirect the iPhone browser to this menu item. So, okay, let's go through it very quick. Well, you will see this is work still in progress, but I came here to uh, give you an idea uh, what it should be. So. This is my local server here, and this is the administration interface. I already installed this template here. This is the template, and I also installed a component, and you will be disappointed, disappointed but the user interface up to now is uh, a dummy only because I did not have the time to design it in the last weeks. Um, but I think you know what I mean, uh, uh, what, what it can be here. You select all the, the things you know. So let's go to the menu. This is that one which I use. And Now we're going to use uh, one of the views the component provides. I will choose, there's a lot of, of trash inside here, but these are the list of articles of one category uh, as an example for you now. And here you select the category. There's, uh, there are some articles inside and uh, this is all this is um, this is uh, working. Um, this 
enables to uh, show an, an extra item which is named uh, get more items and this is actual if you want to use the Ajax or not and this is only design if you uh, these alternate rows if you want them uh, in different colors okay so it must have a title and now here it goes and when you use uh, uh, a browser like the Internet Explorer you will see what actually is done here you have the answer to your question which is really loaded this is uh, a, a list of uh, items uh, uh, unordered list and also the items itself they are also here delivered to, to the user so next what you're doing is um, you assign the template to this menu item boop, boop, boop. here it is here for is the menu item and up to now when you ref we refresh it looks different but still uh, what uh, you usual uh, what regular users won't see <coughs> so it's only for um, the it's only for the iPhone and so you can test it in Safari because it uh, understands all this library code and he, here you will see how it is organized how it works on your iPhone so if you click on article 5 one minute so and if you click on this you will uh, reload another item and so on okay so I can show you uh, here on the phone how it works on my website and um, yeah you have seen this project is still under construction what I wanted to provide you today was with an idea how uh, mobile uh, internet on iPhone could look like uh, I would be glad if you one minute give me what just one minute <laughs> so uh, the novice DE is uh, my website where I've already published information